when I set my eyes on you, everything else fades. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Whether we're in good times or in bad times, we gather together always to give thanks and to give praise to God. And we are mindful of his infinite love and our need for his infinite mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, time and time again, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise all of us, even Beverly and Nancy Allen and Victoria, all of us eternal life with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray for our needs. The needs of our loved ones. The needs of our brothers and sisters affected by Hurricane Ian. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Will all children, kindergarten through fourth grade, come forward? May you go forth for a special children's liturgy of the word. We will await your return to celebrate the Eucharist. Word of God, speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know. That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak A reading from the book of the prophet 
Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. Deuxième lecture de Saint Paul, apôtre à Timothée. Bien-aimé, je te le rappelle, ravive le don gratuit de Dieu, ce don qui est en toi depuis que je t'ai imposé les mains. Car ce n'est pas un esprit de peur que Dieu nous a donné, mais un esprit de force d'amour et de pondération. N'aie donc pas honte de rendre témoignage à notre Seigneur. Et n'aie pas honte de moi qui suis un prisonnier. Mais avec la force de Dieu, prends ta souffrance dans tes heures liées à l'annonce de l'Évangile. Tiens-moi au modèle donné par les paroles solides que tu m'as entendu prononcer, dans la foi et dans l'amour qui est dans le Christ Jésus. Garde le dépôt de la foi dans toute sa beauté, avec l'aide de l'Esprit-Saint, 
qui habite en nous. Parole du Seigneur. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has come, just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. It's truly great to see all of you here and uh, are surviving and able to give thanks and praise to God. And as I said, in good times and in bad times, we always give thanks and give praise. I know that uh, our brothers and sisters in South Florida and Cuba and Puerto Rico, even in our own community, have many have lost everything and many have been wiped out and our hearts are certainly with them. And certainly we're trying to figure out how we're going to respond and what we're going to do. But absolutely everyone here knows, I know we have some new people here, but when people ask, how did you do, and you know, you survived the storm, don't be running around saying, well, I'm blessed. Like the people in Sanibel aren't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just so rude. I'm blessed and you're not. I don't think so. So... We are grateful, and we are called to respond because we certainly do have resources. Okay, today as we hear this reading, we continue in this final journey of Jesus to Jerusalem. 
And I think it's sad that the church did not choose to include three sentences before today's passage, because I really think it gives better understanding. Remember, we just finished that story of Lazarus and the rich man, and the story goes on, and Jesus says, be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he wrongs you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times saying, I am sorry, you should forget. There's that should word. God can give shoulds. (laughs) You should forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. It is in that context we hear today's gospel. And those of us who are Italian, right, Josephine? (laughs) Could you imagine seven times in a day forgiving someone? Remember, Italians are just, Jews are just Italians with a sense of humor. But anyway, (laughs) but, you know, but seven times, and talk about impossible Right, Giovanni? Impossible. You're too young. You don't know us. Anyway, it's impossible for us Italians to forgive seven times in one day. And what do we say? Increase my faith. Increase my faith that I could do for me the impossible. I need more faith to make that happen. And so we hear that context And then we hear, well, as we hear that, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is faith? And faith, actually, in Hebrew is imuna, okay, imuna. And imuna actually can be translated, we translate it as faith, but it really can be translated as faithfulness. And you see, if we talk about faithfulness, it implies a response. So often we think faith means belief. Oh, I believe in God. I have faith. No, even the devil believes in God. Faith is our response to God. It's what we do. It is our faithfulness that says yes to God in our lives. When we hear the word imuna, we may say, well, that that sounds a little familiar because in English, we've translated imuna into amen. And every time we pray, we say amen. Now, amen literally means so be it. But if we understand that the root of imuna is the same root for amen, we understand that when we pray and we conclude our prayer, not with just a ritual, amen, but rather a co-responsibility in bringing forth that for which we just prayed. And so every time we pray, pray and conclude that prayer with amen, we are reminded that we are to bring it about, that we are called to serve. Hmm. Imuna. It is a call to action. It's a call to serve. Ah. Now we understand what this next part of the story is about. Because otherwise it kind of makes no sense if you don't understand all that. And so we hear this next part of the story, which kind of is kind of upsetting, where it says, you know, well, you know, if your worker comes in from the field, are you going to say, hey, come sit down and have a meal? No. No. You know, growing up, I never got an allowance. In fact, I don't think we ever got a thank you. Did you get, you know, Josephine, it's your turn to set the table. When you set the table, did they say thank you? No. They said, no, you set the table. My, right? There's no thank you. 
There was no, oh, good job, no pat. Yeah, set the table. Clear the table. Mow the grass. And we're from Brooklyn, so we had to mow the grass with like these scissors. <laughs> you squeeze them and they... <laughs> My dad didn't say, oh, thanks for mowing the grass. It's like, mow the grass. It's, your, it's what you do. It's your responsibility. It's your obligation. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Nowadays, oh my gosh, you got to thank everybody for everything. They, they do their job. I'm like, I'm not a good boss. Because I go to these workshops to tell you how to be a good boss. And you got like, oh, thank you. You did your job. I'm like, they got a paycheck. <laughs> I, I'm very bad, right? You know, it's, I'm not, oh, thank you. You did your job today. Good jo you did your job. Yay. I, I don't, I don't, it's a, it's, it's, but we're doing what we're supposed to do. You know, growing up, those of you who are over 60, you may remember, we learned the Baltimore Catechism, and we learned, why did God make you? And we know to know, love, and serve him in this life, and be happy in the next are you old enough to remember that? You didn't know? Okay, well, us older, you're too young. Okay, but we learned that, and we knew that. Somehow or another, it got turned upside down, where we think we go to church so God will serve us, so we can say the right prayers and the right words, and magic genie Jesus will solve all our problems. And we'll say amen, but we mean you do it, not me. But that's got it kind of wrong. Because we are made to serve. It's kind of what we're supposed to do. You know, it really annoys me. Like many of you know that, you know, I took care of my mom and dad before they died. And when someone would say to me, oh, thanks for taking care of your dad. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Seriously? Seriously? That's my dad. That's my mom. Seriously? You don't need to thank me. That's what we do. And so, in today's gospel, we hear that that's what we do. And we hear that if we have a tiny response, the size of a tiny mustard seed, we can do great things. My way of saying that is, if you can't clean the room, clean a corner. And then clean the next corner, and the next corner, and the next corner, and before you know it, the room is clean. It only takes a spark to get a forest fire going. It only takes a tiny response to God, and we can do great things. I know Victoria's here. Years and years ago, we decided we needed a homeless shelter. And all we had to do was come out and number to the Action Assembly. Not a big deal. One night a year. For some of us, it was a lot more than that. But most of you, it was just a tiny little spark. One night a year. And after five years, we made it happen. And now our homeless shelter is operating and it's helping people and it's changing lives because of that tiny amount of commitment and that tiny amount of faith. Those of you who are new here, Josephine, you're new. We don't have any volunteers. Isn't that weird? You know, recently um, our operations manager retired and so the diocese has a job description for operations manager. And so we had to divide up his tasks. And one of his tasks, which I thought was pretty funny on there, it said he is to coordinate the volunteer appreciation party. I'm like, really? We don't have volunteers. You see, because volunteers, most parishes have volunteers, right? In, ja in Jackson, you have volunteers. You have volunteers. You see, when you have a volunteer, they say, oh, look, I volunteered. I am so good. I love when, you know, we go to the sister diocese to serve and you have to buy a plane ticket. And you got, but, but 
I'm a volunteer. I'm so good. I'm a volunteer. You see, we don't have volunteers because volunteering sounds optional. For us, it's not optional. Right? It's a whole paradigm shift to change that attitude from like, oh, I'm so good. I'm a volunteer to I have been called to serve. How am I going to? And so at Lourdes, we provide opportunities to serve. The First Step Shelter provides opportunities to serve. Hope Place provides opportunities to serve. It's not optional. It's what we're called to do by our baptism. We have been called and commissioned to serve. And what do we say? Oh, God, look at me. I serve. No, you've only done what you were supposed to do. I think St. Luke reminds his community and reminds our community that we have been given a mission. And we have been given a mission to serve God. And yes, when we say amen, we know that we are co-responsible, that we are his hands and feet in our world, called to make our prayers happen. Amen. Okay, today I invite Joe and Tom to come forward. Come on, Joe and Tom. What anniversary is it? 50 years. God, you could be my parents. Not. Anyway, come up front. Come up the stair. Up, up, up. We want to see you. 50 years. Go up one more. Come on, you're short. Go up one more. Come on, Josephine. There you go. I know, we Italians are short. Anyway, good. Okay. I invite you to recommit yourself to marriage in holiness on this, the 50th anniversary of that celebration at which you joined your lives in an unbreakable bond through the sacrament of matrimony. And so now, as you renew your vows, may the Lord... Keep the promises you made to one another. Turn to the Lord in prayer that these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. And so, repeat after me. I, to her, I, Tom, take you, Josephine, to be my wife. I, Tom, take you, Josephine, to be my wife. You can hold her hand. <laughs> I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. Josephine, repeat after me to Tom. I, Josephine, take you, Tom, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord keep you safe all the days of your life. May he be your comfort in adversity and your support in prosperity. May he fill your home with his blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you all got rings on? You can leave them on. Yeah. Last week, John didn't have his ring on. I know, John. Okay. Increase and sanctify, Lord, the love of your servants, Josephine and Thomas, who once gave each other these rings as a sign of faithfulness, that they may always grow in the grace of the sacrament through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow, that one's got lots of diamonds. I bet it didn't 50 years ago. <laughs> God bless you. Congratulations. Let us come before our God with these, our needs. For all who serve in time of emergencies and natural disasters in Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Florida, may we lift up one another in shared service as we see Jesus in our neighbors in need, we pray. May the God of creation help us to respect and renew the earth as we encourage our governments to address climate change and care for all who are hurting because of these changes, we pray. 
May war and violence give way to peace and reconciliation, strife and contention to dialogue and mutual respect, we pray. As our Jewish brothers and sisters prepare to celebrate the holy days of Yom Kippur, may they receive the peace of reconciliation, and may we recognize our past injustices, we pray. For all those affected by Hurricane Ian, that we may respond to them with open hearts, assistance, and sharing of our resources, we pray. For the victims of the war in Ukraine, victims of gun violence and natural disasters, for Marianne Sines, Carmine and Ellen Melignano, Gary Van Allen, Dave Mitchell, Robert Spadaro, Ruth Lang Heinzman, Robert Keepers, and all who have died, we pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with these our needs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Done with the high. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified O God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread therefore father most merciful we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. 
and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power. God, we believe no matter what, there is power in your name, so much power in your name, move the immovable, break the unbreakable, God, we Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Again, welcome to all of our guests. We're glad you worship with us today. 
Many of our old timers remember we used to always have a second collection, um, but we're, since COVID, we don't, you know, we, well, anyway, we do have a basket by the baptismal font, and it does go to help support religious education and our school. And what I always used to say was, it is greatly needed and greatly appreciated. And so it continues to be greatly needed and greatly appreciated. So there is a basket for our second collection by the baptismal font. Okay, um, some people have asked me, well, what's, Father Phil, what's the difference between a house meeting and dinner church? Well, a house meeting is once a year where we get together in each other's homes and have what we call sacred conversation, and we share what's going on in our, in our community, what we're working on, and what we continue to work on. And I do know that one of our issues is flooding. Gee, what a good idea. Anyway, and affordable housing and other issues. So going to house meetings is part of building relationships, which to do justice work needs relationships. Charity is so much easier. It is so much easier to just open your wallet or your checkbook and be done. But justice work is work. And so it's about building relationships. And so house meetings are once a year, and it's about building relationships that we may be stakeholders in working for justice. Dinner church is different. Dinner church could meet weekly, bi-monthly, or monthly. Every group figures that out for themselves. Uh, I know you think I'm controlling, but not that controlling. Anyway, so uh, we have different groups in Ponce Inlet, Pelican Bay, Margaritaville, DeLand, all over. And what we want you to do is to join a group because be being part of dinner church is a way to be church gathered around a meal. Now, understand that, yes, I do care for all of you, but you also need to be cared for more intimately. So when there is a hurricane and you need somebody to make the coffee, you can call Joe in your dinner church group. She's the coffee lady. She's Italian. We can't live without our coffee. Anyway, we always find a way to make it. <laughs> we'll start a fire outside. Anyway. And so, so your dinner church group would be your group that you could call on and say, hey, you know what? I got flooded. Can you help me move my, whatever. So being part of a dinner church group is about being church, gathered around a meal. The meal isn't the important part. It's about building relationships in our community. So if you're a new member here and want to become part of a dinner church group, we have groups all every day of the week, different locations, whatever. You can go to a different one every week, whatever. Anyway, so that's called Dinner Church. Okay, if you would like to sign up for Dinner Church, we, you can go to the parish office and let us know. Also, if you want to sign up for house meetings, you can go to the parish office. Those of you who are visiting, parish office is open on Sundays. What a concept. <laughs> My God, you must have a crazy pastor. Okay, tomorrow night is supposed to be Torah Talk with Marie gallo Lefko, but because... She's exhausted. We're all exhausted. We're going to postpone it and pick up next week on Monday, October 10th. So Torah Talk is uh, understanding of the Hebrew Scriptures. It's, she's amazing. So you can join us for Torah Talk on Monday, October 10th. On Wednesday, we do have our youth group, youth ministry. We have junior high from 6th. Six, uh, six through 8th grade at 5 o'clock, and then at 7 o'clock are 9th through 12th graders. You got that, Teddy? Good job. Okay, and so we'll have our 12th graders in the uh, night. Okay, sound bowl meditation with Nicole because of the hurricane was canceled yesterday, but it will be next Saturday, October 8th at 10 a.m., and um, so come for our meditation, sound bowl meditation with Nicole. Our Young Family Ministry is hosting a barbecue on Sunday, October 9th, uh, after the 1030 Mass. So, Jesus, bring the family. And uh, I see we have some young family people. Next Sunday, after the Mass, we're going to have a barbecue on the playground. And that's for all of our young families to get together and to get connected with each other. And we certainly want to support our young families. Okay, our Latin ministry potluck was this past Friday, but because of Ian, it's postponed now to October 14th. 
So our Latino potluck is Friday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Now, the fun part of being pastors, see, I get to go to the, the young family barbecue, mm, and I get to go to the Latino potluck, and the Latino parties are the best. <laughs> There's always dancing, and yeah, they just whip out a guitar, and you know, it just happens. They're amazing. So I get to go to the Latino potluck. It's really a good time. Anyway, um, tonight at 4 p.m., our LGBTQ plus community is having, um, is is watching or whatever, um, there's, it's called the Rainbow Synod. And we all know we've been through this synodal process as a parish, but the Pope is also calling for all groups. And so the Rainbow Synod will be the LGBTQ plus community responding to how they see and what they see the needs of the church are for now and for the future. So they will be meeting this afternoon in our chapel. And so they're... Uh, that's the Rainbow Synod. Okay. Joe and Tom, stand up. We're going to bless you again. So you can do another 50 years. He's like, I'm out of here. No, okay. <laughs> Actually, she said, no, I'm out of here. All righty. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, our children, come up here and grab your instruments. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.